And so what I thought I'd do is break down what is the self concept and then how we can use it to help our lives, to transform, to change, to move forward. So I've actually got the book open in a few places. And this one I just wanted to read out to give a definition on the self-concept. It's basically a generalization about your experiences in life. That's what the self-concept is. It's a generalization about an aspect or a quality of your behavior. And moving in now to the second chapter, and he talks about the power of the self-concept. I have the book here again, and he says here, what is a self-concept? It's a very large generalization of yourself. Let that sink in for a moment, where you've got a whole lot of qualities and it's a big generalization. It's also a system that creates continuity across time and space meaning your identity will back this up no matter what and spit out the results as you go through time and space. So it could be in the future, it could be things that you remember in the past, it could be your opinion about the present moment, it could also be wherever you are in different contexts, your identity and this self-concept will be with you, generalizing its way through the world. It's an energy saving device if you like. He then goes on to say, it's a feed forward system oriented towards the future, meaning it strengthens itself as it goes. So if you have a series of beliefs, it'll strengthen those beliefs. And I'll get into that a bit later. And the fourth element was it's a recursive system that refers to itself and acts on itself, right? So your self-concept will refer to your opinion of yourself all the time and then act on that. So your actions, the daily habits, will come from that self-concept. So if you are, I'm just a natural athlete, that'll be your self-concept and you'll act on that. If I'm a natural lazy person, then if that's your self-concept, then you will act on that or maybe not act at all and be very comfortable, right? So you see the different people out there in the world and you can see their self-concept in how their physiology shows up straight away. So that's the very large generalization that he has in this book. Now your self-concept will also alter your perception of the world. You'll have a big filter on and it won't let you see the world in reality. It'll stop you seeing everything that's out there because of your opinions of yourself. And so a little element in here, he talks about this is who I am. Think about that for yourself. This is who I am. Where have you said that? It's just who I am. That is a clue that we're talking about your self-concept. And it also says here about the limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs will become more limiting, whereas empowering beliefs or enabling beliefs will become more enabling. They get strengthened. Right? So if you have a limiting belief that I'm just no good with money, it will reinforce that and give you lots of evidence to prove it. If you say the opposite, that hey, I'm very good at saving, you'll then look to do more of that in the future. And so it dictates, it's like you're a prophet of your own um, positive, uh, uh, what's the word, destiny, or you're a prophet of your doom, right? You're actually predicting the future because of your self-concept. So you can see how if you can change your self-concept from I'm no good at saving money to I'm a great little saver, right? That Or I'm very good at investing or whatever this thing is. Don't get me wrong, we do need some skill. But what if you could change the self-concept? Do you think you might show up differently in the world? Of course you would. I know I would. And so I'm gonna play with this on myself for sure, even further, I love studying this stuff. And I love shifting my perception of myself. And I love helping my clients shift themselves. So let's get into shifting your self-concept, loving this book, and we'll jump into some of those exercises as we move forward. And so first, let's have a look inside the book 
about the elements of a healthy self concept. Really important. And so Steve Andreas talks about that your self concept needs to be durable, resilient, if you will, in that no matter what, you are going to back it up. No matter what, your self concept is going to follow through. And so you watch this all the time. You get, say, a pauper on the street, they will follow through with their self concept of what they think of themselves. You get someone who's, I don't know, at the other end of the scale, perhaps a business owner or, I don't know, Richard Branson or someone at the top of the chain financially. Well, their self concept, as you can imagine, is very different. <laughs> so, what's the difference? They're just human beings who showed up on earth as babies. What happened? So it's the self experience. It's the experiences of the two individuals are very different. The beliefs that were put into them in those first seven years of life are very, very different. And so their beliefs inside themselves, the values are very different. And of course the skill set gets magnified over 20 or 30 years because Richard Branson would keep on learning, whereas the person who's on the street didn't. They learned how to survive on the street, but their self-concept was that they perhaps didn't value themselves because they were not valued as children. I mean, that's a very big generalization in itself, but you can see how those beliefs are going to stop you moving forward, stop you learning anything new. When you're young and you haven't given up on yourself, and so that's really the self-concept at play. And so what else do we have here? We've got durable, we have accurate, meaning it's a good predictor of your attributes and your behaviors. It is self-correcting and responsive to feedback. This is a healthy self-concept as opposed to a rigid one that will not shift. Unconscious, which means it's automatic. So it just, it just happens. For example, with peak performance, people in a peak performance state have a great self-concept and it just automatically comes out in particular situations because they've trained themselves in that way. It's also connecting with others rather than separating. This is a healthy self-concept we're talking about, where we are connecting with others and not separating deliberately. It is free of self-importance. Oh, that's a good one. There's the ego at play. And so arrogance and all the other signs of egotism, is, it's free of that, right? So this is a healthy self-concept, right? This is someone who's rounded and centered. And it's very, very funny because right now, I, out my window here, I'm on the Gold Coast, which has a lot of people, you could argue, who, hmm, let's say, are not all that centered and are not all that grounded and are a little bit too worried about the opinions of other people. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I've got some self-concept work that I might be able to do on the streets of the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. So it's very interesting studying this and I'm sure as I go round the uh, Gold Coast area, I'm going to find lots of case studies to assist me with my scientific endeavours. So that is the, the six elements, durable, accurate, self uh, correcting and responsive to feedback, unconscious, connecting, and free of self-importance. Uh, these are the healthy elements of a good, healthy self-concept, one of a person who will thrive in the world.